Hello and welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific, and they call me Chris of the Northwest. And we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're coming up with an outrageous but believable reason not to visit your in-laws, we'll be caching in the Northwest. Uh, can I get you anything? Refill your eggnog, drive out in the middle of nowhere, leave you for dead. <laughs> uh, doing just fine, Clark. Okay, tonight we're talking about winter weather travel. As always, live audience, what are your thoughts on winter weather travel? We want to hear about them. Jump in the chat. We know you will. We love hearing what you have to say, what you think, and all of that. But, of course, we can't do any of that until we bring in our creepy capuchin. Some say he is so old, all of his parks were Jurassic. And others say the cries of unfound earth caches haunt his dreams. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Ah. Yeah, there's always just one more Earth cache, right? Uh, oh, there's maybe. a lot more than one more out there. <laughs> and there they can stay. Oh, <laughs> wow. I uh, love it. We'll find them Earth caches. All right. Well, hey, folks, before we get into tonight's topic, which is about how to travel to in this time of year to get to those those Earth caches and whatever else have you, uh, let's have a quick reminder about how much we appreciate the support of our patrons who help the podcast coming to keep coming each and every week. Uh, thanks to Land Sharks. They are one of our corporate Denali level sponsors. Uh, hey, the Land Sharks let us know that they will be at the Gajif event in Coquitlam, British Columbia next weekend. So if anyone who is also going to that event uh, wants to get an order in and not pay for shipping, well, place your order by November 9th. Mm. And the Sharks will bring it with them to the Coquitlam Gajif event. Wow, personal delivery. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. No, right? you just don't get that every day. No. no. No, you don't. That's pretty cool. So there you go. So there's an option. If you are uh, looking to get anything from the, the Sharks' store. Um, no, and I see Mrs. Landsharks in the in the chat there already. All right. Um there you go. Hello, oh, yeah. Anacortes. Anacortes. What a lovely place in Washington to visit. All right. Hey, well, you can check it all out at L-A-N-D-S-H-A-R-K-Z dot C-A. And let's not forget our other corporate Denali level sponsor. Well, that is Gold Country Geotourism. Visit exploregoldcountry.com. Learn about the geotours. Learn about the region. Learn how to travel safely to and from that region and amongst it. And don't forget to download the app. Find it all at exploregoldcountry.com. And folks, let me tell you, if you want to know more about supporting this here podcast, well, why don't you head on over and look for the Patreon link right there on the caching dot, nope, cachingnw.com a website. Whew. Folks, it's not as easy as we make it look. No, it isn't, especially if you try and improvise on it. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> see painful nw.com. That's there right. you go. See aching. There you have it. Um, but folks, now it's time for the glow. And some have asked, what is a glow? What is a glow? Why, thank you for asking. Why, it's a geocaching log of the week. So whether you read it or whether you wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. You can send an email or a recording of your very own voice to feedback at cachingnw.com. You can call in again with your very own voice to 253-693-TFTC and show us just how you glow. Now, folks, tonight, you're in for a treat. Am I? No, the other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jim. No, I was really looking forward to a treat. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, maybe a for you it's a trick. I get the trick. Okay, I got it. Everybody else gets the treat because we have two connected glows tonight. 
Ooh. So sit back and enjoy the melodious tones of Wit's End. Enjoy the glow. I don't know about melodious, but I give it my best shot. Hey, there's a what's in there. What's thanks for coming, Kino. Okay, glow. This is from Halloween Hunt, the haunting of Mr. Thomas event. That's GC Alpha Echo Whiskey Delta Charlie. And it's from Cool Cow Cashers. Always good to hear from a patron in there. And let's see, the log says, the nights are the most difficult. The days here are one long nightmare. That one long nightmare is me. Cool cow. <laughs> I am the nemesis of nightmares. From mountaintop to seafloor, I have conquered them. My bellow is the tempest and my only warning. My hooves, the thunder that shakes them from their holes and the clang of my bell, the lightning crack that strikes them down. Oh, I know this Elidian. I never ever got it down. Elidian? Elidian? It's the creature in the swamp. Anyway, I'm going to say Elidian. Because it rolls off the tongue better. I think it does. I think that's the way it should be said. I know this, Elidin. I have stalked him before. In years past, my friends and I waltzed into the heart of his lair, plundered his spoils, and waltzed right back out with not so much as a scratch. The beast was nowhere to be seen. We laughed all the way home at his empty threats. Recently, Rumors began to grow of another expedition being planned to confront Elidin in the heart of his precious swamp. You like it now? (laughs) Elidin. It's awesome. Have another sip of your beverage there, Jay. (laughs) Having bested the beast once, I offered my demon hunting expertise to this new group of adventurers. Challenging the beast in the company of a well-armed mob is one thing. However, before the big event, I wanted to challenge Elidin one on one. So last week, I did just that. Stepping off of the trail, I found that Elidin must have taken too not taken too kindly to our previous encounter. All traces of our previous route through the swamp had been completely obscured. This was hardly enough to stop me, though, because. Elidin's covetous nature had left other clues to his whereabouts. As I stood there staring into the swamp, searching for a path to take, a foul odor wafted through my nostrils. Just then, I heard a squeak coming from the brush. Turning toward the sound, I spotted one, then two, then three pairs of beady red eyes staring back at me. It seems that Elidin has held on to Mr. Thomas's bloating, festering head a little too long, and it has started to attract rats. Suspecting that they were being attracted to the smell of rotting flesh, I followed them into the swamp. Their trail was faint at first, but the closer I got to the lair and the pungent stench of Mr. Thomas, the more of them there were. Eventually, I came to a seemingly impassable wall of brambles. I knew that I was close to Elidin's lair, but couldn't see the way through. Standing there, contemplating my next move, something suddenly brushed against my ankle. Looking down, I saw a scraggly tail disappear into the bush. I knelt down, parted the branches, and staring back at me in fear was another pair of beady red eyes. The rat's hidden passage through was revealed. Crouching to fit into the confined passageway, I pushed my way through the final few feet and into Elidin's hidden lair. Just like my last visit, there was no trace of the cowardly demon Elidin to be found. Not to have made the journey in vain, I stopped to pay my respects to Mr. Thomas. The spirits seemed pleased by my gesture, and when I turned to leave, I found a will-o'-the-wisp there to guide me back safely. Twice now, I have ventured into Elidin's lair. First in the daylight, and then at dusk. Neither time has he been brave enough to show his face. 
Perhaps when we visit on Al Hallow's Eve, when the barrier between the spirit world and ours is at its weakest, he will finally be brave enough to confront us. That was very, very well written. I wish it was read as well as it was written, but it was excellently written. So he's talking, of course, about the bloated, festering head of my first victim, which is the name of a cache, not just a description of an object I own. <laughs> um, oh, clear that cool. right up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so that cache is GC. Is it Juliet Seven Victor Hotel? Is that the is that the cache? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So it's a great cache. Chris and I've done that cache. I nearly left him impaled on a branch there to bleed. I did that. not come back without a scratch. That's right. I came back with a scratch. Quite a scratch. <laughs> that was early, early in our caching time together. And I think we've talked about that in the past. But uh they planned uh, an event there, as you heard. Mm-hmm. In that GT coffee and Gia caches. Yeah. yeah. So this next the thing, daring duo. Right, right. I must say. So this next log is from that event, I think. No, that was that was the log from, oh, the, that was from the event. Um that was actually prior to the event. That was a will attend log from yeah. uh cool cow cashers. Now this one is that was from, a will attend log. That was, was, yeah. was a will attend. That was a will attend. <laughs> Wow. That's probably the best will attend log you'll ever I was gonna find. say that is seriously putting effort into your will attend right? log. Okay, I need to step up my game. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. And then this is from the cache itself. Okay. I found it. Okay. I found this it. This is log. a found it log. You know, just a standard found yeah, it log. Just piece of cake. But it is from the bloated festering head cache. So is there anything yeah. standard about that? No. This was logged by Doug Fresh. And it's dated just a couple nights ago on Halloween. Indeed. And it says, uh, not really sure where to start with this. I've been tracking this beast for well over a decade. I've had plans laid out many times to make this voyage, and every time those plans have fallen apart. I was made aware of Geocache's and JT Coffee's plan to assemble a crew to hunt the beast, and I sure as heck was going to be on that crew. In anticipation, I purchased some gear that I thought would be needed based on my years of research. Chest high waders and pig's blood. <laughs> also a tracking device for my trusty dog, Ozymandias, in case we had to send him tracking. We ended up being late at our rendezvous point, but not to the point we were holding up the show. We took some time to go over the plan and determine which gear was needed and which could be left behind. We chose to leave the chest quitters behind in lieu of the faster, more nimble trail shoes based on the recon by Cool Cow Cashers. As everyone had checked their gear, we were set to go. We performed a head count of nine cashers and vowed that we would leave the swamp with as many bodies as we entered. Though not necessarily the same bodies. <laughs> Upon entry to the swamp, it became readily apparent that we were being watched. Many sets of red glowing eyes shone brightly in the growing darkness. Were these friend or foe? We heard many sounds of creatures near and far. Some flying overhead and some skittering in the thick brush that surrounded us, threatening to swallow us if the swampy mud didn't first. Our group of nine, plus the dog, maintained our pace and trekked swiftly through. So far... The beast had not shown itself, but we were ready for when it inevitably would. In time, our hopes for finding the beast began to wane. The many trails leading us to and fro yielded not a shred of evidence of its treacherous presence. However, we did find the remains of its first victim, rotting and putrid and full of the most foul things. We contemplated for a while what our next step should be. Should we wait here, taking selfies and hopes for a beastly photobomb? Should we continue our search and risk being picked off one by one in the fleeting light? Or should we make haste back to the safety of dry ground and come back another day? Unanimously, we chose to head back, and swiftly, as the light seemed to be fading faster than normal. 
On our turn back, it seems as though the track was familiar. We made good headway through the swamp, but eventually our luck faded. We had become intractably lost. We sent out scout parties in many directions in hopes some would come back with good news. Eventually, one of our scouts yelled out, Whose keys are these hanging up on this shrubbery? They were mine. But they were in my pocket, protected by a zipper. Surely, had the beast been toying with us and leading us down a false path? Another call out by another of our party. They had found the path again. We again took stock of our numbers and counted nine bodies. But in this light, it was impossible to ensure they were the original nine we started with. After some time, we realized that the darkness began to fade. Had we spent the entire night in the swamp and survived? No, it was merely that the swamp had stolen all the available light, and we were now out of its grip. We had survived to tell this tale. We hadn't found the beast nor dispatched it, but we would return. <laughs> Oh, this, this cache, you know, just engenders these great logs. It's legendary. Yeah, it is. And so there you go. I mean, whereabouts in Washington state is du DuPont ish like? between Tacoma yeah. and Olympia. Okay. So kind of on the left or the West side of the I five. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can kind and of you know, if you're coming into town, go ahead and stop by Doug Fresh. He's got an unused pair of chess waiters that you could borrow. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and this is interesting, right? Because now these logs, they talked, they didn't talk about having to wade through, but I've heard other stories where people have had to like oh, wade yes. up to their knees or higher to get to this cache. A lot of it depends on the time of year, okay. uh, the recent weather, the route you take in. I'm convinced that there's a route that's better than what we took in. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes wow. the closest parking coordinates are not the best path. Just saying. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, yes. Now, I, I don't think it was clearly mentioned, but cool cow cashers went the night before and blazed a trail to help the the nine adventurers go through. So I thought that was uh, incredibly. Yeah. Incredibly. Uh, and Generous. And as Breilang points out, this event was held this week, in fact, just two nights ago. So mm -hmm. he says, he says, I'm thinking there might be a good trail to the cache right now. <laughs> Aside from the rain, it might be a good time to go check it out. Mm -hmm. There you go. So if you're local to that area, go enjoy the adventure and send us your glow. Yeah. Exactly. Assuming I would, assuming I would you survive. Right. I would suggest the highest rubber boots you can find, you know, something that's complete wellies, shall we say? Wellies. Very good. Um, because when we went, yes, I sunk in almost what mid thigh. Yeah, he was. Yeah, the boots he had were not. No, tall enough. no. But it's okay. We brought an entire change of clothes. We were prepared. Yeah. Though so I still well, smelled had to change the for a week. Yeah. yeah. Now. Yes. Oddly enough, these were two great clothes, and I thought they were worthy of being read. But that's not our topic tonight. <laughs> no, but it is like a couple of days after Halloween. So yes. very appropriate to have the scary story glows. Right? I thought, though they were tricked, you should be treated. That's Aww. it. So there you have it. Now, tonight, folks, uh, we want to talk about winter weather travel. And I'll tell you why in just a little bit. But you can use the hashtag weather to tell us how you equip your vehicle for winter weather travel. And of course, as you have already done, folks, you can use the hashtag FATAS to share something for the after show. And you can use hashtag Carl Weathers if you want to talk about the movie Predator. Or Rocky. Or Rocky. Or Rocky 2. <laughs> Rock, I think he was in Rocky 3. Did he, did he come back in Rocky Balboa? I think Carl Weathers has done a lot of Rocky movies. There That's all go. I'm going to say. Uh, As opposed to Mr. T, he only did one. Mm. There you go. I pity but that I mean, fool. How many when, do you need him in? When I think of weather, I think of Phil Connors. Phil? Don't tell me you don't remember me, because I sure as heck fire remember you. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it seems like that happened morning after morning after morning. After morning. Yeah. yeah. Well, Good let's morning. jump into the news, shall we? Okay. Yes. We got a little bit of news. We got some news from uh, my corner of the Pacific Northwest. And uh, I'm going to read this story, but I'm also going to give you a heads up in a, in a few weeks. We're going to have a special guest on to dig deep into this particular news story. So we're very excited, very excited about this. But the news story is BC, British Columbia Search and Rescue, has launched a new database with a beautiful web front end for you outdoor enthusiasts. It is called the Adventure Hub. This new Adventure Hub database offers listings encompassing a wide variety of activities in British Columbia, including canoeing, geocaching, fishing, rock climbing, and skiing, and many more activities. It also maps out where those activities can be enjoyed. Users can look up the sports or endeavors they're interested in, choose a region. The site will provide a listing of relevant resources and vendors. It provides suggestions for apps to download and websites to check for weather uh, closures. Good to know for geocaching mm -hmm. um, and other information. It mm -hmm. also includes training tips for various outdoor activities. It currently has about 450 reviewed and vetted listings. Um, and it will continue to add more as time goes on. And there are some. Some listings in there for geocaching. I'm going to be uh, reaching out to those good folks at uh, uh, Adventure Smart and uh, BC Search and Rescue. And I've got a few suggestions of some other ones to add to the list, but uh, from a geocaching perspective. But uh, yeah, if you're planning any kind of outdoor adventure in British Columbia, there you go. Start at the Adventure Hub. Nice. Now, there's a website there to check weather. Is that Carl Weathers? Is that like a yes. weather, weather, weather it's, webcam? It's a, it's a Carl Weathers webcam. It's the, yeah. it's the Weathers weather webcam. You, you go to it and Carl Weathers is standing outside and he's going, it's, uh, it's raining. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's that all my Carl Weathers impersonation, which is. Oh, spot on. Terrible. I mean, I mean, the last time I heard him speak, he sounded anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing great. a complete blank for Carl Weathers. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, he was also an acting coach on uh, Arrested Development. Yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, what a great show. Uh, you just have to Google Carl Weathers. And once you see him, you go, oh, yeah, that, that guy. guy. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, he wasn't in Star Wars. He should have been. You sure? Oh, he, would have been, he would have been great. There's a lot of actors who have been yeah. in the Star Wars TV spin-off. That's true. Now, right. another thing coming up here in November, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're all, what, 10 days away from the start? And let me um, do the math here. 15 days away from, no, in 16, 18 days away from the finish of the Gajif event. <gasps> it's Gajif season. It's Gajif season. Yay. And just to share that yeah. the WSGA is putting on a couple of GIF events. The Puget Sound chapter is having a GIF event Very on nice. November 19th at the Grand Cinema in Tacoma. That's GC Alpha Golf 18 Echo. And the Southwest chapter, or I'm sorry, the South Central chapter is yeah. having an event November 17th. That's uh, GC Alpha Delta Romeo Romeo Victor, Victor. Golf Golf. Um, there's Sorry. there's at I, least I, one in the North Forty Eight chapter. I know there's one in Bellingham. So uh, definitely that, and there's three in um, this little corner of British Columbia. Um, I'm sure that the um, Oh, and that Comakino is going to the Gajif and Marysville with that. Yes. Uh, is that on? Is that one of the two that you mentioned? No, it is not. No, that would be the 48 North event. There you go. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of Gajif events going on. Um, so, you know, check your calendar on your geocaching app. There's tons and tons of options for you to get out there and see some of these films. 
Yep. GIF, as Helen points out, there is no J. So, well, you know what? Except we say we say G- good Jeff. Like in Geo. <laughs> we're we're inclusive here on the podcast, so we yes. say good Jeff. Just yes, so you that do. nobody yes. feels left out. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, you know, it's either to be inclusive or to annoy. We can't figure out which one. So to we me, it's do a win win, really. Good like, Jeff. Yeah. If I can be both inclusive and annoy, then I've, you know, I've hit the mark. Okay. Malicious compliance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Anyhow, lots of good GIF events. I'm sure uh, there will be um, uh, anybody who wants to throw out their local good GIF GC codes in the chat. Uh, uh, go for it. Rock and roll. And, you know, the South Central one on Friday the 17th and the Puget Sound on Sunday the 19th, we're not that far apart. You could do both. Yes. So here's an interesting thought just on that, because I, um, Laura was talking about this the other day, and I know a few people, um, <laughs> inclusively annoying is a great caching name. It is. Maybe the name of my next geocache. I, I was going to say or a rock band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I bought that album. um what i was going to say is um because we were talking about it and to to your point like yes you could go to both but here's the other thing some of the gajif events especially the ones being held in in cinemas or theaters which is so cool to get to go to an event and watch it in a cinema or a theater um but often there's limited seating so it becomes a first come first serve so if it's awesome if you can get to a whole bunch of them but if you are going to one maybe don't use up a seat in another one so that somebody else can have that spot. I would maybe just consider that. Now, if there's tons of room, Hey, you know, go for it. But you know, think about other folks who maybe are just hearing about Gajif events now, because this is the first time they've listened to this podcast and they want to be inclusively annoying too. (sighs) Come join us. Be inclusively annoying. Um, I know the one here in the Puget Sound has like a 95 seat theater. Uh, Headquarters is having one on Friday the 12th, I believe. Oh, like right at headquarters? That's like 120. I'm sorry, it's a Sunday the 12th. Uh, It's like a 120 seat theater. And so they're asking for, you know, for numbers ahead of time. Just will attends. Yeah. So we'll attend so that they, you know, somebody doesn't come and go, Oh, there's no seat. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Can't one of the, in. one of the ones up here, the one in the evergreen theater in Coquitlam, uh, I think it's next weekend. It's next weekend. Yeah. It's the one the sharks have said they're going to be at. If yeah. they'll bring product to, uh, that one is sold out and that's a hundred seats and that's oh, okay. the capacity already, but there's mm-hmm. two others in the Metro van area. If you're, if you're only hearing about this now, and you're like rats. I missed out. You haven't. You haven't. Okay, just... and and just to be clear, the sharks are not bringing product with free shipping to all GIF events. No, just okay. the one in Google. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping maybe to see them in the Tri Cities. You never know. You like, never know. You never know. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. Let's put okay. It that. Okay. And uh, Komakino, they wanted to know if he would come and autograph things, and he's oh. I've autographed the geocaching comic to help. I help make, but I've yet to sign an autograph for a GIF, well, except signing the logbook. So I think he ought to go, and whenever it's in a theater, just sign the screen. Oh, my gosh. I or think you know, go in the fine. green room, sign the wall in the green room. There okay. you go. That's, yeah, that's probably better. Um, but, hey, if you are going to be at the same GIF event as Comikino, or if you're in uh, in the Kelowna area, I don't know. i got to check and see if the Kelowna area, they must be having a, a GIF there. But uh, if you're going to be in the Kelowna area and uh, you're going to see Cash Canada, they'll be at a GIF event there. And, um, you know, wherever you're going to be, if there's a GIF filmmaker there, ask them to sign something for you. I think that's kind of cool. Honor the work these these folks have put into putting those videos. Exactly. Now, Starcasher will be attending three GIF events in three towns on three different days. Mm -hmm. None have space limitations. Oh, there you go. Good stuff. So will he get three souvenirs? We'll have to wait and see. We'll we'll have to find out. Maybe if you bring a Sharpie, Comakino will sign your forehead. Ooh, I'll have a Sharpie. Okay. 
Brian Lang says, pivoting to get the Sharks to go to the Tri-Cities event this time of year, they would need to do some hashtag winter travel. Ooh. Subtle, Brian Lang, subtle. And <laughs> weather before heading across the passes. Well, Indeed. oddly enough, that's what brought up this topic. My brother hmm. came and visited this week, my brother and his wife, and they drove over from Idaho. They were going to come last weekend, but that was the first winter storm in the past. And they thought, you know what? We probably shouldn't travel in there during that time. And I thought that was a wise thing to do. That is a wise thing to do. So they were worried about a winter storm in the past. And that made me wonder, do I have everything I need in my vehicles for winter weather travel? And as an extension, do the listeners to this podcast have what they need in their vehicles for winter weather travel? There, there's that, and there's also the <laughs> subtle as a chainsaw, indeed. Uh, there's also the planning ahead, uh, which mm -hmm. it sounds like um, maybe your your brother uh, and his wife did a little bit as well, which was checking the the passes, checking the conditions. But we'll talk checking about the that weather. Well. But let, let's let's start about. Um, I mean, the first thing I would say is um, make sure you at least have MS tires on your vehicle. Um, that would be mud and snow. Mud and snow. The tires. As opposed to some, maybe like an odd knockoff candy that you would have gotten at Halloween. <laughs> oh, I got some MSs. <laughs> they're, they're just M's. <laughs> um, but um, I thought they were threes. Right? If, you mix them, if you mix them with Skittles, they're MSs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, well, but you know, here's here's some. So I refer to them as M and S's, um, mud and snow tires. Uh, that's the that's the minimum this time of year that you need to have on your vehicle um, for driving in the Northwest uh, mm -hmm. on on the roads, and particularly the passes. And we'll talk about chains and whatever else later. But um, how do you know if you have M and S tires? Well, if you look on the sidewall of your tire, there'll be a little triangular icon. That has a snowflake in it. And if it has that, then you have M and S or mud and, and snow tires. Um, well, also important that they actually have tread, but you know, yes. that's a yeah, whole other conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're going to be driving in, well, perhaps mud and or snow, but I'm thinking more snow starting November 1st, you know, that was just yesterday. Yeah. Washington state permits you to put on studded tires. Uh, you have until March 31st. And then everybody in your neighborhood will know you have studded tires on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> um, if you're primarily driving in city areas, studded tires don't help your traction when there isn't snow. It actually decreases your traction on wet pavement. So not only that, frankly, they don't help a ton in snow either. Your, your mm -hmm. M&S tires are going to actually be just as good in snow studded tires are for ice mm -hmm. and not black ice either that, nothing helps you on black ice well not driving that helps you on black there ice. you go <laughs> hanging at home that's yeah. what makino says my yep. winter weather travel prep preparations include not traveling in the winter <laughs> <laughs> indeed yeah uh, call, call an uber there you go. CVX Drive goes, interesting. I'm going to have to go check my new tires on the truck. There, there you go. go. Yep. Uh, yeah, we got some. Starcasher just got two new front tires uh, three weeks ago, as the old ones had sh a metal showing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was time. That's probably yeah. a good sign oh, that you need new tires. Really good tire management. They're coming through. You got all the rubber off of them. You did well. Yeah. <laughs> well used. Yeah. Got your money's worth there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, Helen had one. She says, uh, m and mud and snow are on the Sharks Tacoma year round because, well, that's how they roll. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Also a well-named truck, right, Chris? That's right. <laughs> I do like the Tacoma. Uh, Brian Lang says, the all-new uh, all-terrain tires on my Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk with the m and designation. There you go. Right. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Star Cashier, you got your money's worth. I, I, that's, that's perfect management. You've used it up. Now you go buy a new one. Don't change them early. I mean, come on. 
Uh, well, but it's that time of year, right? Um, yeah. uh, we, in the past, uh, for for one of our vehicles, used to just have a spare t a set of tires, uh, actual snow tires, that we would swap on uh, this time of year, um, and then have the the all terrains the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. On the Jeep, you just although the Jeep's tires are starting to get down there, we're gonna probably probably be looking at a new set of tires on that thing soon. But um, that just uh, that's got sort of year round, uh, very deep tread M and S. Uh, they're they're AT style tires, like Brian's talking about in his Jeep. Good lugs on them. He, yeah, <laughs> let's just not go there. Uh, but yeah, so tires, good thing. Um, chains, um, mm -hmm. a lot of mountain passes this time of year. Uh, not only is it mandatory to go through the mountain passes, I'm pretty sure the I-90 does this. Um, I know the Coquihalla up here does it. Um, you absolutely have to have M&S tires on and you should be carrying chains. Yes. In fact, when the pass has the, the signs up that say chains are required, if you don't have them, you will be fined. It's as simple as that. Now, the hack here in the Northwest is to go to Les Schwab. Go to Les Schwab. You can get your chains. If you don't use them, you can return them by a certain date. And I want to say that's, you know, March 31st, April 1st, somewhere in there. Not Check there, with yeah. your local really? retailer first. Yeah. You can return them and get your entire purchase price back. If, if you're you like brand new, them. unused. Yes. Right. That's super cool. Um, and Wet Coaster, you are exactly right. Learn how to put on the chains before you're sitting knee deep in the snow on the side of the road trying to figure out how they work. Yeah. Absolutely. Good advice. So yeah, put them on in your garage, put them on in, you know, and on your street. Um, you know, I find it's best is if you lay them out, drive the car onto them and then try to connect them up top where you can see rather than, yeah. you know, trying to figure out how does it, how does this work on the bottom? Cause it, it doesn't. <laughs> and then go for a high speed run on the freeway to make sure you put them on well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um okay yeah yeah you want to make sure they're good and secure right yeah legal maybe, advice provided by this podcast maybe maybe get a rental car first um, a high speed run he by that he means like 30 miles an hour yeah. <laughs> if that oh my gosh that's that's hilarious uh um um i suddenly Skyhawker. forgot his name skyhawker thank you uh when the Going gets tough, the tough go south. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Funny. Um, so yeah, so that's you know how you should have the 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 wheels, the tires of your, mm -hmm. your motor vehicle ready. Um, and I think that segues to the next part that I was going to talk about, which is uh check the websites. There, um, you know, I'll let you guys talk about Washington State. Um, but in British Columbia, it's drivebc.ca. Uh, fantastic website. It will show you everything you need to know about driving any time of the year, but particularly this time of year. Drivebc.ca brings up an interactive map. You can look at webcams to see the current conditions. You can look at weather forecasts and real-time weather data for any of the highways and, and locations. And it has multiple spots along along the high, highways or this information is there. And it'll have you know, construction information, accidents and all that kind of stuff. So drivebc.ca, check it before you leave if you're traveling in the winter in mm -hmm. British Columbia. Now, mm -hmm. do you have something similar in Washington State? Well, you can go to uh, WSDOT, uh, lovingly known as washdot.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and there you can get a mountain pass and winter travel report. So it'll show you all the mountain passes. You click on the one you're looking for and it'll give you your weather report and live webcams. Yeah. I was going to say uh, wet coaster says, check the highway webcams. It's also a good, mm -hmm. good thing to do. Social media is something to consider too. I followed Snoqualmie pass. I think it's just at Snoqualmie pass on Twitter years ago. And that's good year round because I see updates from them. Hey, there's a jackknife semi in Easton. The highway's closed. You know, hey, we're doing rock blasting Tuesday night. We're going to close it. So uh, it's good That's for fun. weather alerts, but it's also just good year round. They have a pretty good social media person contact. Uh, I don't know what the mm -hmm. position is. 
Okay. Uh, WSDOT has several PIO uh, social media handles that you can follow, uh, public information officer. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I saw the quizzical look. Uh, the, the different. It's kind of like the WSGA seven chapters. They have the eastern region and a western, or a southwest region and stuff. That cool. you can also get kind of updates in that. But I have found the Snoqualmie Pass Twitter feed to be quite mm-hmm. timely. And they show a lot of pictures. They'll put the the cameras up there every yeah. now and again and let you know. And they'll say, "Oh, hey, you know, White Pass is closing for the season this year, or we got you know all these all this snow last night in Chinook Pass, or whatever." It's they tweet. They talk about other passes, but I think there is other handles in their social media arsenal, but Snoqualmie Pass is where I start. Very mm-hmm. cool. And I'm sure for other regions, there are like uh, content. I think, if, you know, again, bottom line, if you just sort of look for social media links or, uh, or, or Google the name of the region you're in and highway conditions, you'll probably get uh, the info that you need in a timely manner. Yeah. But, but yeah, check before you go. Do a little bit of planning. Make sure your vehicle is uh, equipped on the tires. But um, Chris, what kind of things do you carry in your vehicle? Well, thank um, you for asking. I was just going to bring that up because I'm a big one to put in blankets and a candle. Um, you know, I... Are you having a vigil while you drive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, a kind of a picnic because sometimes you could get stuck <laughs> in it. Right? I, I was a survivor of the blizzard of 76. In Ohio. And uh, luckily, my dad was uh, traveling. Was he going to Chicago and back that day? And he got home. Uh, no, I'm sorry. My mother said, don't leave today. Don't go. Because well, I have to. No, don't go. Just just wait an hour and see. And the blizzard came in and he would have been stuck somewhere on the on the highway. or And they were stuck out there for a couple of days. So oh, wow. a candle not only provides light, but it provides in a car. A, a good source of heat against, you know, yeah, against the, it's the not cold. Not in a Pinto. Not in a Pinto. That's unsafe at any speed, even stopped. Yeah, that was a Corvair. But yeah. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, it was unsta- Oh, no, the Pintos were unsafe when they started before you, right? In front of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so I carry, you know, warm, warm blankets, gloves. Uh, always a scraper and snow brush, mm. right? To keep that off of your car. Clean you may your not... windows, people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and folks, clean your roof and clean your trunk and your hood. It, it's required by Washington state law that you get the snow off of your car, right? Have you been following behind somebody in this huge chunk, like an iceberg comes yeah. flying off the back of the car and and just, you know, luckily hits the road in front of you, but blinds you for a moment? Yeah, get all that snow off your car. So it's, a snow um, brush will do that. Depending on your vehicle, sometimes that can be a challenge. If Thank you, Brian Lang. Yes, clean all the snow off of your car. Yeah, it, it's also by law in, in British Columbia. I, I, I've i rarely seen it enforced. I see so many cars when mm-hmm. we get our, our rare snows up here in the lower mainland. Um, so many so many people clean like a strip on the driver's side of the window. Yes. Yeah. And I'm thinking... What are you, yes, that <laughs> that exactly who's sharing that? Is that I do, I do. Is that yeah. You, Jim? yeah. So if you're if you're listening to the audio podcast, Jim brought up a, a, a video or a photo that shows exactly what I'm talking about. There's just yeah. enough for the driver to look out. Yeah, if you have to bend over while the defroster <laughs> Is clearing a spot to drive. That's not safe. <laughs> you know what? Go to Canadian Tire. Go to what? what's your equivalent to Canadian Tire down there? Princess. No, you don't have Princess Auto, uh, do you? Uh, no, we have. We don't have a U.S. Tire. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but a Les Schwab or yeah, any of these um, places. Just yeah, go there. Any of the big and, tire chains. Just, and, just count tire. Just go, yeah. And get a windshield cleaner, a, a snow brush thing like the scraper on one side the brush on the other side Mm -hmm. and just keep it in your vehicle and use it (laughs) yeah oh my gosh Um, i've seen several people put a a sheet of some sort i've seen i've seen insulating i've just seen a blanket yeah over their windows at night so Mm -hmm. that they can come just pull it off their windows are clean and they go yep i've done that with uh, i've done that with my car 
Um, my car has a huge windshield. The Jeep has a small, almost vertical windshield. So it's pretty easy to deal with, but the car has a huge windshield. And so, yeah, I have put a, a tarp on there and I mm -hmm. saw some, some discussion about tarps, um, that people are using them to carry, uh, when they have to put chains on to yeah. throw it down under the vehicle to put chains. On. That's a great suggestion. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, Jeannie says, uh, I had a driver's training instructor call that turtle driving, yeah. you know, when you're hunched down and you can just look through the little, little spot that the defroster is the only able to keep clear for the moment. Yeah. That's such a bad idea. Ooh. Uh, wet coaster says socks on the wipers. That's hmm. a new one. Haven't I hadn't heard, heard that. that. Yeah. Um, at least prop your wipers up. So don't, you know, if you know, it's going to yeah. freeze tonight, just go outside, pull your wipers up. Did you know your wipers lift up? Yeah. They can go yes. into a away from the vehicle position. And then that way, if your windshield freezes, A, it's a heck of a lot easier to clean your windshield because you don't have to kind of work around the wipers. B, you're not going to rip the rubber on your wipers when you try and pull them up so that you can scrape your windshield. Um, and C, it'll be, they'll be ready to roll um, a lot faster. So um, just lift them up. If it's going to, even if it's not going to snow, but if it's just going to be freezing cold, Lift them wipers. Socks what on else wipers. You... I had never heard of that before. No, that, that makes total sense. Yeah. Um, um, what, is, what else do you guys carry? Well, I was just going to say on the wiper thing real quick. One, mm -hmm. I was, just last winter, I saw some article that said, don't lift your wipers because they're not designed to stand up that long and you'll stretch out the springs and they'll lose tension against your windshield. I'm like, yeah, this is what? somebody that lives in Arizona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm like, okay, whatever. <clears throat> that sounds like misinformation. Yeah. See, I do that when I know I'm going to park illegally because then the cop can't put the uh, ticket. There <laughs> oh yeah. That goes right. away. It's up there. <laughs> Nothing he can do. He just has to walk away. Just remember <laughs> to put the wipers back down before you back out of the garage. Oh yeah, because it's the outside. It's wet and it's in misery. Yeah, there you go. Um, do you guys do you guys carry a shovel with you? I'm thinking like a small folding foldable so shovel. In yeah, year round in the Jeep, I've got a I've got a go bucket that I mm -hmm. have for the Jeep that has a small collapsible shovel. I was going to say another thing that I carry, and this is I guess the more modern version of the the candle, um, is the uh, the um, uh, air activated uh, heat. Um, heat pads, what do we call the little the low um, hotties kind of thing? Yeah, the, the hand yeah, warmers. Yeah. <clears throat> hand warmers um, yes. I've always got some of those. Go right now, go to Costco, buy a case of them for like what 12 bucks or something like yes. that. It's like ridiculously cheap. Costco's buy a closed case of right them. now. Sorry, Costco's closed right now. Oh, okay. Well, put them on your wish morning. list and Santa will bring them to go you. tomorrow when it's go open. <laughs> They're cheaper right now if if you can get in <laughs> and back out. The long term price out. might be a bit higher. Okay, yeah, that's true. Geocaching is free. There you go. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I was just going to say on that on the the note of the candle, that's one. But yeah, you had asked about shovels. Uh, Kitty Kitty Quest. Quest says yes to the shovel. Hers is in, in my car, car right now. Hmm. Very good. Um. Interesting. Wet coaster is a long cord for your block heater for areas that get cold winters. Now, not yeah. everybody has a block heater. Um, no, a lot of cars from the Midwest have have yes. those. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm very familiar with that idea, and I know diesels have them as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but let me say that you know if you go out and warm up your car, stay with your car. Yep. Okay. At at you know here. On the western side of Washington, a lot of cars are stolen in the winter as people go out, turn on the car to get it warmed up, and then go back inside the house. Yeah. So, so pro tip: if you're like, oh, but if I'm going to go out to my car and I'm, you know, I'm going to sit there while it's just, you know, warming up and and doing stuff. Hey, what a great time to listen to the Caching in the Northwest podcast. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, pop on a podcast. Just sit and and. Let the defrosters do their work. You can get out there and scrape if you want to. Oh, make sure you you have a scraper that's going to reach halfway across your car, right? Yes. If you get this little bitty scraper and you've gotten a new SUV and you can't quite get <laughs> up to where you want to be, test that out before you need it. Just, just say, it up on the hood. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. say no to turtle driving. Yes. yes. 
say no to turtle driving. You know, I found last winter, if it's a light powdery snow and not wet and mushy, icy, mm-hmm. uh, I parked in the driveway and opened the garage door and pulled out the leaf blower and blew all that snow off the roof of my car and the driveway before I ever pulled out of the, the driveway. Nice. So, we are getting lots of interesting mm-hmm. uh, ad- advice and tips here. Uh, Cole Kino gave us a list of things he carries. Can we grab that? On a serious note? Yeah. Go ahead and read that one. For my winter driving, I do have a blanket, multiple rechargeable devices for phones, a flashlight that's also a phone charger, candies in case I have low blood sugar, an ice that's spike. Good. Ice spike sounds like a drink of some sort. Uh, uh, but, you know, have water with you, you know, something to drink, extra snacks, you know, put in some trail mix, some, um, some granola bars, something that's going to last all winter long. Pro, that, pro tip, if you're putting a granola bar in your, in your car in the winter, maybe warm it up a bit before you go to eat it. <laughs> Otherwise, you could chip a tooth. You will chip a tooth. <laughs> and change them out once in a while, because in the middle of the summer, they turn to mush. Yes, they do. Um, guys, thank you so much. We've got great tips. This one comes from Starcasher, who's in Ohio, who knows what winter weather's like. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is where I got my the most of my winter weather experience. Fill old water bottles with windshield wiper fluid and keep it in your car so you can pour it on your windshield if you need the if your nozzles on your car freeze up. Huh. Yeah, because a lot of that wiper. That. A lot of that washer fluid has yeah. an antifreeze component to it. So mm-hmm. it, it yeah. freezes at a much lower temperature than just water. I strongly uh, advise you not to use hot water on your windshield yeah. to melt the ice. You'll end up cracking your windshield. Either that or you'll, especially if you've got any sure. chips in it. Um, <laughs> ice spike has vodka in it, probably. Um Sounds like a drink we're going to try making. Oh, here. see, now now we're getting into Ice Spike O'Neill, Ice Spike Lee. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Ice, ice, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was going to say the other thing is, like, it, it would actually potentially create the exact problem that Start Casher is trying to avoid. The, um, the, the spray nozzles that your windshield wiper fluid can come out of, if you pour water... <laughs> Mm-hmm. on the windshield and it goes down it's going to depending on where you're living it could freeze up again pretty fast yeah and it's going to freeze over top of that and then you're going to be driving and go oh man it's, you know these guys in front of me they're either you know for the sand that's down on the road it's making my windshield muddy i got to clean my wind. oh oh i can't clean my i can't I, then nothing's <laughs> squirting out there yeah, yeah. <laughs> so kitty quest says side note the snow brush stays in my car year round it's very useful in the winter to quickly get off the loose dirt of my windows when driving on logging roads and such Ah, i like that yeah yeah all year round good tool Mm -hmm. Uh, mine stays in the car all year round yeah 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 just because then when you need it for winter there it is who knows you could be driving up to leavenworth in you know October mm-hmm. or I don't know, some sort of ethnic event. And <laughs> uh it could snow up there when you least expect it. Has that happened, Jim? Uh we've seen snow up there, but not in October. But it could happen, yes. It could happen. Kitty Quest says, I meant summer. <laughs> <laughs> He's yelling at us again. I thought it was from Kitty Quest. Yeah. yeah. It's a loud whisper. Wet coaster says, clean your headlights whenever you can. Yes. Hard to see if they're dirty and snow covered. Yes. And, and your backup cam. Oh, good. And your backup lights, right? Make sure yeah. your, your brake lights are clear rather than just this, you know, nice pink glow on the back of your car. I, I think they're stopping. Uh, CRS 98 brings up a good point. He says, don't use water bottles. Keep them in their original labeled container. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so keep a five gallon thing of of um, washer fluid, washer or, fluid or in the back of your car. Get a sharpie and write "This is not Kool Aid" on it. Oh yeah, that you, that's what you would write, and everything but Kool Aid will wa- will wipe off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or the word "not" will because that's right where your thumb goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think we covered off this topic pretty well. We gave 
uh, some good pro tips for mm -hmm. things to be thinking. We got some great feedback from the live audience. Uh, yeah, don't forget to install the winter blinker fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, so you always keep that topped up. And use the blinkers. Go ahead and burn through all that fluid. I dare exactly. you. Please. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, some some great, uh, great tips, great advice. And I mean, honestly, the show, the first half of the show was glow. And uh, those were fun. Thank you for mm -hmm. fishing those out, Chris, and sharing those. Good reading, Jim. Danke. Genie says a jump starter. They're small and they can charge a phone. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Those are nice to have. And they often have a flashlight on them as well. Yeah. I've yeah. got one at work that has a flashlight and an air compressor in it. So you can oh, wow. a tire. Ooh, air compressors. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, guys, thank you so much. And thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this year episode of Caching in the Northwest. Absolutely. And it's uh, time for us to take a moment to thank Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, our corporate Denali level sponsors. L E N D S H A R K Z dot C A is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. Remember, they're shipping online orders. Online orders onliners they're, they're shipping one-liners daily um but if you want to place an order by november 9th and you're going to be in uh, where's my there's the right button and you're going to be in hi guys uh in coquitlam british columbia going to the gajif event um you remember to get that order in by the night mm -hmm. yeah all right and for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures check out exploregoldcountry.com that's exactly right. We want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That's Land Sharks, Gold Country Geotourism, Groovy Owl, Cool Cow Cashers, and Cashly, the geocaching app. If you want to know more about supporting the show, click the Patreon link somewhere. It's it's like a a, a hunt. Where's Waldo? Where's Patreon mm. on the cachingnw.com website? And we want to thank people, you know, that throw events like geocaches. People I give in the chat, like Katie Quest. People who come late to the show, like you, Dak. People who give a good advice, like Wet Coaster. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> We're going to get through all these. Yeah, let's just thank Seabeck Tribe. With and new cars. Kid Vegas 19. Trexer. Actor Doc. Boomer 365. Be Pendragon. Kev MacD. Gas station tuna. Now, yeah, maybe right. that's not something you want to put in your car for winter weather. <laughs> <laughs> it might keep longer than winter. Anyway, uh, M Nerve. Mountain bike. Team Noltex. You talks to rocks. GSM times two. Al Robrick. Nervous Energies. Dora Moore. Just Carlo. Why no Seattle? Green words. CRS 98. Peach of Washington. The Camp Clan. RAR 285. Just finding our way. Geo Nav Amateur. <laughs> huh. J Carl. BC Rock Crawler. RE 54321. Sege Hove. LG 9000. Oh, Subway Mark. MC3 cats. Log work. Limax. Very helpful in the winter weather. Genies. Flagman. Skyhawker. And Antaeus. I don't know why we're pronouncing them that way, but we are. Folks, thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. So if you like the show, Click the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. Now, if you didn't like the show, let us know what you want us to talk about. But if you like the vibe, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and give us a review. Now, if you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. Of course, you can call into 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask us a question, or pull us out of a snowbank any time of the day or night. You can always email us at feedback at cashingnw.com and join us every Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned now for the after show. That was a bit on the quiet side. I think the after show was whispering.
It was the Kitty Quest after show. Uh, what do we got? We got any after show stuff? Well, I can't get it to after show again. Oh. The after show. It's a little louder. A little better. Okay. That's as much after show as we get tonight. Yes, there is some fatas. I was going to say, we got, we got a week to work on that. So I saw it very early on. At least we have sound tonight. I didn't have sound last week. So that's true. Uh, bah, ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Uh, here you go. Kitty Quest. Oh, Kitty Quest. Hashtag fatas. <laughs> so I logged my 10,000th find yesterday. Wow. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing that. There we go. And the crowd went wild. That's right. That's right. Uh, let's see. What else Here's one know? from Starcasher. Wits End, will you read that? Hi, Will again. Starcasher says, spend part of my extra hour this weekend at the sixth annual Daylight Saving Time End Time Warp event. It starts at 1.45 a.m., and it ends a half an hour earlier at 1.15 a.m. It's GC Alpha Foxtrot Kilo Kilo Charlie. And yes, that we should also remind everybody to make sure to put your clocks back where God intended them this weekend, Sunday morning at 2 a.m. <laughs> That's funny. You at know what? Last, you can fight governmental control. Yeah. Over your uh, life. Um. I, I appreciate Start Casher sharing about that because I always forget that they do that event. And I always think, oh, that would be so fun. I should do an yes, event like right. that. And then I totally forget. So right. I think what I'm going to do is this year, I'm going to go into the calendar and I'm going to go three weeks mm -hmm. before the time change next year and put a reminder in the calendar to say, host an event on the weekend that the time changes, just like that one. Because that to me, Sounds like such a fun thing to do in the middle yeah. of the night. I'm going to yeah. host one at 2.15 a.m. in the fall. <laughs> and again at 2.15? <laughs> no, it never happens. Oh. There is no 2.15 a.m. on that night. We spring, or the spring, I mean, the spring. The spring, right. We're going to do it in the spring. So it would skip right over it. Yeah. I hope you missed the event. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, had to, it had to be an hour long it was it's, <laughs> talk about a flash event feels yeah. like it didn't even happen i know that's awesome and there goes uh wet coaster remember the clock go back one hour this weekend don't be like that guy on a course i was put on and put your clock forward mm. <laughs> whoops that would make a two hour difference yeah. wouldn't it Got an I extra like hour to sleep or just use that extra hour to go caching. There you go. There's an event and Cito in Bellingham this Sunday, Brylang says. As long as it's not pouring with rain, I may try to head down. Yeah. See, yeah. when the weather gets bad, head south. There you go. Uh, Mrs. Monkey and I may also try and make it to the Cito and uh, an event in Bellingham this Sunday. Hopefully we'll be able to make it down there. All depends how work goes on Saturday. Anyhow, okay. Um, I'm going to have to look into this from CRS 98, waiting for the day when Land Monkey gets introduced as one of these. A proboscis monkey. A proboscis yeah. monkey. I am, familiar, I am familiar with that type of monkey. We must have used that one in the past. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, I might get my nose out of joint. <laughs> uh, da, da. Oh, Kitty Quest, you're very welcome. <laughs> Congratulations on 10,000. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's like three lifetimes of caching for some of us. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mrs. yes. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Mrs. Landshark says we'll be leaving Seattle and heading north on Sunday. Oh, okay. Awesome. Big adventure. Uh, I was going to say, and Chris, you can speak to this. Yeah. I have yeah. just hit up the Spark Museum in Bellingham after the Cito. You guys both went, and it sounds really cool. Oh, you look at the website. Go for a show. You want to see the show. And uh, the Spark Museum itself is incredibly interesting. Uh, you know, history of radio and sound and all sorts of electronics. Okay. Uh, but the the show is really worth the price of entry. It so includes a Tesla coil, I believe. 
Uh, yes, spark generator, lightning generator, Museum. more than just a Tesla coil. Innovation. It's uh, the URL is sparkmuseum.org. That's the one. You That's want to go see it. Cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, look at that. See I went just a couple of weeks ago with, oddly enough, I am and monkey cakes. Okay. And uh, really, really nice event. We went after the. Um, oh, it's right downtown. Went yeah. the hands, hands across the border. Right across after the hands across the border. Yeah. And I mean, it's right downtown. Parking is sometimes difficult. Yeah, it would be. That's really cool. Okay. Well, I don't know if we'll make it there on Sunday. I don't know if they're even open on Sunday. Let's find out. But it's worth the visit. Folks, thank you so much. And while you're looking at the Spark Museum, why don't you get out and get caching in the Northwest? <laughs>